my Alpina E46. So what we're gonna do is convert it to a manual. Oh, oh, <gasps> that all went, literally all went in my hair. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got gear mold oil in my hair. <laughs> So, day two of the Alpina conversion, and we are joined by Nick and Jay from German Car Spares Kent. They're currently hiding in the car. <laughs> and they're in the car because they're fitting this, which is two pedals instead of one pedal, because this is rubbish, and Alex is not allowed near this because he'll slip the life out of it. So, uh, Jay's gonna fit this, Nick is doing the center console and gear linkage, and then we're gonna put it up in the air and put the gearbox in, but there's been a bit of a, I don't know, confusion, is that the right word? Because they have brought over this lovely manual gearbox, look. Oh, and a prop shaft, gear linkage, little, you've got to change this, because this is the slot for your clutch pedal, and look, wiring. You get the whole wiring known because this will allow me to have a reverse light switch, and they've brought the gear gator look and some wooden gear knobs and oh everything but we've had a little bit of a think because this is a five-speed gearbox which i quite like i like a five-speed gearbox and this is a pre-facelift now pre-facelift e46s usually have five-speed gearboxes the prop shaft looks completely different from the one we have and there's a six-speed gearbox that just sort of happens to be over there where, where are all these parts from though, Taylor? That, that gearbox that just happens to be over there is from uh, Alex's E46 M3. I'm gonna have a little think, I might nick it. Anyway, we're not sure what we're gonna do yet. We have a look. I'm sort of in the mindset of fitting the five-speed box because I like the five-speed box and then potentially get a custom prop shaft made, which is a bit of faff, but I can get it done. But for now, we're gonna concentrate on getting the pedal in, get the gear linkage in, and then we can put it up pop the gearbox in, pop it all up, and then it'll be done by lunch. Oh. So what, 45 minutes? All right, today's Tuesday. My prediction is not done by tomorrow, Wednesday. Rory, I don't like your negativity. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> E46 parts. That's what he specialises in. And I've actually known Nick for years, haven't I? Long, long time. Probably 10 years now. Yeah, because I've always had E46s, you see, and they've always been shit. So I've always gone to Nick to get parts, of which he has many. Yes. Including front hubs for an E46 Touring. Yes, which he gave you, Roy. Also, the little thing that you made for Alex, have you seen it? It's on top ah. of the coffee machine. Ah, lovely. Oh, the, the, the statue that we made. Yeah. So, Nick actually made this for Alex. And Jay, to be fair. Yeah, that, you yeah, both. Jay. And look, it, the elastic bands. It does look just like Alex. Look, he's got rigor mortis to the arms. It says, hold out your hands. He's got a terrible haircut and a terrible dress sense. It's perfect. I think some of my LPG stuff is in the way of a hydraulic line, uh, Roy. Uh, yes. Sorry, Nick. Why no, you it's fine. the LPG shit? Because uh, I don't really, I haven't researched yet how to depressurise it. This is taking far too long, to be fair. We should have had this in here by now. But it's all of this rusty bullet shit. It's getting in the way. I mean, look at who'd have thought the Titanic was powered by an LPG. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Well, I'm trying to get this uh, out, this thing here, which engages the gears. Um, have you got, so that's the automatic Nick, This is the automatic, this is the automatic gear selector. And I'm just trying to get it out. But at the moment. No. What else, what on earth would I have that for, Rory? Because you're removing the automatic gear. Yeah, but, and the car will go, <sighs> finally. Hey, hold up, you know we want all these old parts in part exchange. Oh, do you? The, yeah. uh, to be fair, the gear linkage wasn't, it wasn't on nice this one. Don't worry I got about it. It, it nice was missing. Nice Let's keep us waiting for three hours. Destroy all the old gear we were going to take away with us. Oh, sorry. It's fantastic. I do apologise, Nick. It was Rory's fault, in all fairness. I should know. But you know this bloke's so tight. I went in there to wash my hands, and he's even watered down the swall figure. That's not me. That's Alex has done that. that and a little spray squirted all up the wall. <laughs> 
Oh dear. Well, look Rory, if you look through here, we now have a hole where a gear lever will sit. Hopefully. Where you'll sit on a gear lever? No, I don't do that. Before we continue, another reminder from me that if you want to buy yourself a used car, van or motorbike, make sure you run a car vertical report on it first to ensure it's not been crashed, stolen or clocked. If we take my absolutely beautiful BMW 7 Series E32 that we are, taking to Poland. You can see that we have got green ticks for odometer and damage, but an amber warning for finance and legal. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that the last MOT was actually failed. So this car has not been road legal for the past seven years. And now for an example of a car vertical report that is even worse than this one. Here is a Subaru Impreza that's got green ticks for odometer and finance, but an amber warning for damage. So we want to check that out. And in some instances on car vertical, you get crash pictures as we have here front end damage and if you scroll down a little bit further you can see that this car was damaged two times in 2007 we've got category d here which isn't the end of the world and in 2017 category s which means that repairable structural damage so if you were to find this car on facebook marketplace as a clean title car you know that that's a big fat lie so again if you want to buy yourself a used motorbike a used car or a used van make sure you run a car vertical report on it first what's more you will get 10 percent off using the code v2 What are you doing? I'm just taking off the oil cooler lines for the gearbox oil cooler. How are you, what? I've just, oh. No, you've just cleaned this up. I have, yeah. Taylor, it's dripping, Taylor, it's dripping. When you work on cars, a bit of mess is going to happen. It's just part and parcel. I think you're going to need to chop the other two ends off. You've just got to look at it for oh faith. My. Value for what it is. I didn't notice that this was happening. <laughs> I've made a mess of that. <laughs> you just dropped it all down yourself. <laughs> oh. You've made such a mess. <laughs> Rory. I don't like your tone of voice. Don't need those. They can go in the bin. Right, so we're ready for a gearbox. I might need the engine tilting backwards ever so slightly. Oh, what was that? No idea. Can you give us any more than that, Nick? It's catching on this heat shield thingy up here. Are we catching on that thing again? Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. It needs to turn. The other way. Clockwise, so that way. Yeah, a bit of shit doing up there. Look, you see it. I've got... Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy. Oh, now you find the blue roll. <laughs> Shut up, Rory. Oh, I can see a problem. What's that? Mm. There's a dowel still in the engine and a dowel in the gearbox. No way. So you've got a double-ended nudger? I've got basically. a double-ended nudger and clutch fluid in my eyes. So, update. The gear linkage is pretty much in with all new, uh, what material is it? It's nylon. Nylon, polyurethane. polyurethane and nylon bushes with a short shifter. So this should feel really good. Uh, so that's now on, the gearbox is in, it's mounted up, it's sitting level. We just need to finish off putting in the gear linkage and then measure the prop shaft because we might have to get it adjusted slightly. Oh. She's in. She's in. Ah, she's in, Matt. The prop shaft. I thought, I'm just going to try it and see if it fits. And lo and behold, it fits. Which one, Matt? The, the one that comes from this gearbox. On the left side, we've got <laughs> the, the M3 prop. And then on the right side, we've got the, gear, the one from the automatic gearbox. This is the one that come from the car that this gearbox came out of. So it's the correct one for this gearbox. So this car and it is, no, it in the is next a little few bit hours. tight, but it fits. So this car in the next few hours? No. Could... Jay, stop being no. negative. Jay, what, what well, is wrong with you? I mean, the thing is... is, this, is a, this is a prop shaft that fits. It's plausible. 
But then when it comes off down the road, it's going to wipe why out the driver and the passenger seat. But why would it come off? It's because be she's under within. a bit of tension. Yeah. Just a bit of tension. Yeah. So there's no movement. So it's going to be going... <laughs> it's going to be like straining for a poo. Like, and then on. it's going to... Let's do these bolts up because I don't want nothing to do with this. They're so negative. I don't it's like this. It's not negative. Look, the way I look at it, the engine no, mounts are a little bit soft, the gearbox mounts are a little bit soft, the diff mounts are a little bit soft. A little it'll bit. all stretch itself out and it'll work itself out and it'll spin and it'll work and it'll be lovely. I've got a prop shaft and it's been shortened by it, apparently 30 millimetres. And it's the next day. And it's the next day, if you haven't noticed by my wardrobe change. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now, Rory, is insert the prop shaft onto the motor vehicular and see if it fits. It's a little bit too short, but that's all right. Is it actually? I'm gonna put it in a hot wash. Wait, no. Taylor, remember, remember when you were meant to measure this? Wait, no, if you put it in a hot wash, it'll shrink further, won't it? Or will it? How does it work? It looks a little bit short, but it's got this joint on the end. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it fits. I can't believe you didn't measure this correctly. I have measured it correctly. That is such a tailor thing to do. But it fits perfectly. Look it at it. You just had to pull it and extend it. I haven't pulled it and extend it. Oh, you're so negative, Rory. Get off the channel. <laughs> we are ready for an exhaust. And I'm going to need my trusty, uh, my trusty assistant, Garage of Luke. Oh, don't be like that. It's been a long day. Your niece. God, he's such a maniac. Yeah. yeah, right. If you grab the end of my pipes, yeah. mm -hmm. then I'll grab this front piece of my pipes. It is actually quite heavy, isn't it? Uh, it needs to go towards Rory. Quite a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was the wrong side of the car. Thank you there, Luke. How you doing there, Luke? Yeah. You all right? I'm in worse predicaments. Are you not <laughs> done yet? Rory, I don't appreciate your language. Just hurry up. You've been so late today and I just want to go home. Shut up. Ow. Ow. Right, I think that's sort of there. Oh! Shall I release it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Did we not want to check whether the gearbox actually works? No, no. Before we did all... No, no, no. Okay. <sighs> It'll work. Do you know why? Because it's not an automatic. It's all sizzle on, Rory. Time to drop it down. <laughs> okay. I haven't connected the wire correctly. I'll give it another go. I've, I've adjusted it. Oh, it's beeping at me. Hang on. Wait. Wait. <gasps> Shall I see if it'll move? Go on, put it in first gear. <gasps> Wait. <gasps> well, the speedo's going up. Oh my God, I'm in second gear. And look at the speedo. Look at the shift gears. Wow. Wah. Right, so let's do a quick ratio check. So I'm going to see what revs it's at at 70 miles an hour. A lot. It works. It does work. I'm not sure you're going to be doing any top speed runs at this time soon. No, so it sits at 3,250 RPM at 70, which is a bit high. That to be, I think that's actually what my 330i sits at. Is it? Yeah, yeah, no, they sit high. Is that right, Luke? No? No. No. It should be lower than that. So I will probably fit that diff over there at a later date because that has a higher, higher ratio. Higher ratio. That well, one's a higher ratio. Longer. That one's longer, which means the revs will be lower on the motorway which means it still maintains its GT cruiseriness. But if I'm correct, at the moment this, this is will going be, to be faster. A very fast, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> and the only one other thing I need to do is, as you will notice, when I put the ignition on, we've got the warning light here to say that the transmission is faulty, which is what I had before. 
Now, I've got one of these at home. I forgot to bring it with me today, but you get a little blanking plate that goes in there and just covers up that little screen. And that is a factory BMW thing. Well, so ev not every dial has a... Well, if you code it out, it will no longer be illuminated but every dial from a manual car will have a little blanking plate in there, yes. But not the screen behind it, right? Yeah, yeah, the screen behind it is there from factory, it just won't be illuminated. Oh, okay. So I need to get that from home. I'm gonna take the dials out, split them, put it in there, it's quite easy to do. Uh, and the only other thing I need to do is wire in the reverse light, but I'm gonna do a bit more research into that and see if there's a bit of an easier way of doing it. So other than that, this car, I think he's ready to hit the road, Rory. But before you go, a reminder that the new Auto Alex podcast is now live and available to listen to. Or if you prefer to watch the best segments of the podcast, you can do that too on the Auto Alex V2 channel.